Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're going to be checking out the Masters of the Universe Origins Tila and Zoar 2 pack. Uh, this thing is gorgeous. Oh my god, I just want to say that right out the gate. I love these multi box packaging, the window boxes that they've been doing for the Origins line, of course, as a callback to the vintage toy line. But this packaging is just absolutely beautiful. So Tila and Zoar was an online retailer exclusive. I got mine through BigBadToyStore.com and it features a new Tila figure and Zoar, uh, which looks like it's done very much like the vintage one. I'm excited to pull it out and take a look at it. You can see we've even got like the artwork down here of the kid playing with Zoar, which has a very vintage feel to it. But the artwork across the top, amazing. We got the 40th anniversary little hollow logo up there, but then we've got Tila and Zoar and beautiful artwork. You can see Castle Grayskull up here on the top. Uh, lots of cool little creatures, like we got creatures over on the side of the box here. And then on the back side, gorgeous artwork up at the top, featuring both Zoar and Screech, so hopefully a Screech repaint will be coming at some point there. Tila doing battle with Skeletor, I love it. And then we've got a cross-sell showing other figures in the lineup, as well as our action feature call out so really really beautiful packaging i almost hate to open this up but guess what i'm gonna do it so we can get a closer look at the figures within all right let's go ahead and start by looking at the new tila that comes with this two pack here uh you can see with the tape measure there she's at the 5.5 mark um, so this is our second Tila in the line, I guess, unless you want to count Green Goddess. Um, but it does utilize the same body once again that we've already seen uh, with the female figures in this lineup here. Um, but we do have some differences in the paint deco and then the head, of course, has a difference as well. So this time around, we do have the white fur at the top of the boots that is painted, which is very nice. And then all of the wrist bracers and uh, the decoration on her outfit is now a bright yellow, which is supposed to be kind of like a gold. It does have a bit of a metallic shine to it. So it's very bright and it's very shiny. Um, so that does differentiate from the much more matte kind of flat goldish color that was used on the first release. I think the face on this one is really beautiful. I like it quite a bit. She's almost got a little bit of a smile there, uh, but the hair is the biggest difference because she does have the different shaped tiara up here on the top, which is that same kind of metallic yellow color. Uh, unfortunately, it's got a bit of a paint slop going on there on the hair where you can see the yellow is coming onto the hair. Uh, and then the biggest difference is the ponytail. Now, I think that this is supposed to be like a 2000X version of Tila brought into Origins, though the ponytail isn't quite the same as what we saw on that line. Um, that is where she's most known for having the bigger ponytail head. Uh, same with the way this tiara is shaped up here. Um, so I guess this is sort of like our 2000X inspired Tila, but I do. I like that hair quite a bit. I think that ponytail looks really good. And another thing to add to that whole 2000X aesthetic is the fact that she now comes with a sword, uh, which is it, which was introduced in that original 2002 lineup there. So it's the same kind of yellow color. It's just molded in this yellow plastic uh, to match with what her uniform has there. And then she also has the Snake Staff Ka, which is also now molded in that same yellow color. Now to add to this... She does still come with the snake armor, the classic Tila snake armor, uh, which appears to be pretty much identical to the first Origins release. And this, they kept the normal, like, burnt red color, kind of matching her hair there. So we can attach it just like before. I will say, I kind of wish the weapons matched the armor, rather than being the bright yellow that they are, because I feel like that would look a little bit better. Now let's go ahead and just roll right into comparison time on this because I think it's very important to show these two Tila's side by side here. And of course that first release also came with that same snake armor. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the snake armor from our new Tila here um, because I want you guys to be able to see these two really standing side by side here. Um, so the faces are very similar, but of course the biggest difference is the hair there. But one other thing I want to point out is that the skin tone is different. Uh, the new one is much more pale. We had a, a much nicer tan on the first release of Tila. And the reason that I find this unfortunate is because if you want to do a head swap, if you wanted to put the ponytail Tila head on this particular Tila outfit, or vice versa, unfortunately the skin tones are not going to match up well. So let me just kind of show you here. 
we're gonna go ahead and do some head swapping so there you can see the difference and i don't know hopefully that's coming across on camera well because it's extremely noticeable to me that she's got a very pale face here and a much more tanned face there so unfortunately part swapping between the two does not work too well um, obviously the bright yellow of the tiara on the new head really stands out amongst the rest of it there too so maybe the head swapping thing wouldn't have worked well anyway uh, but it is still interesting that we've got a completely different skin tone with her all right let's talk about zoar uh this is really interesting to me the way they handled this particular figure uh because this is extremely similar to the original 1982 version of this figure and the reason why this is kind of cool is that this particular figure has got a lot of history with mattel like battle cat this is one of those toys that was pulled from their big gym toy line it was originally a falcon and an eagle in that line and then it was brought over to masters and painted orange and blue to be a giant bird <laughs> named zoar which of course eventually became the sorceress's bird form once filmation came out um so it's really interesting to see that they've basically utilized that exact same mold that exact same style uh they've even retained the same action feature where you can see there's the little trigger on the back of the right leg and when you press it it makes the bird's wings flap look at that that is like a 1970s action feature right there guys still working today now this is different than those i will say it is much more light in weight compared to the vintage ones uh this one feels a lot more hollowed out than what the old ones did and the wings are made of a very soft pliable plastic it's much much more gummy than the wings on the old one they were always pliable but they weren't this pliable this is a very soft rubbery material uh which is probably fine uh as long as it holds up over time that's always my worry with these really really gummy rubbery plastics also just because of the way uh it was packaged in the box you can see this wing is kind of warped bending downwards and because it's this really soft rubber i don't even know if there's really any way i can fix that like i don't know i think it's probably always going to be stuck that way i do like how they kind of pearlized the white on there on the head you can see not on the tail it's still a flat white here because of this rubber but the head is like pearlized white so got a bit of a shine going on there just like on the vintage one it does come with the same style armor uh this time it is molded in sort of like a metallic red you can see there's a bit of a shine there and it fits over just the same fits over the head kind of clips down on the tail i mean it's insane that this looks just like the vintage toy it even comes with the same style perch look at that like it's just ripped right out of the vintage line it's really interesting because you know most of these figures have been redone with like modern articulation and stuff like that and with Zor here, they just decided to do it exactly the same as the original toy line. So on one hand, I love that it's still a big giant bird, like classics shrunk it down to normal bird size, probably to fit more with what we were seeing in filmation. I kind of love that it's the big giant bird from the vintage toy line. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm of two minds on this one. On one hand, I love toy history and I love seeing this exact same mold from the 70s come back yet again be reused yet again but on the other hand i can totally see the argument being made for this should have been a new mold with articulation so i don't know so there you go my friends there is a look at the tila and zoar two pack from the masters of the universe origins toy line you know like i feel like i did a lot of complaining in this video about these um so maybe i came across a little bit more negative than i feel like i don't feel super negative about this but i also don't feel extremely excited about this set like it just kind of exists <laughs> um i do love that new tila head and the colors are bright and vibrant on her um so i don't know if she's necessarily going to replace the first tila that i got but it's nice to have another tila with a different look in the line um you know with the biggest downside being the uh skin color difference between the two figures and then zoar everything i just said about zoar like it's a fun toy but maybe it should have been updated i don't know you guys can let me know what you think of course uh this particular set was an online toy store exclusive so i got mine through bigbadtoystore.com happy hunting my friends and until next time